All right, start with some fans and the review of my previous channel, Blood for Dracula, otherwise known as Andy Warhol's Dracula. Let's check it out. Far away. Dracula needs to leave Romania to find some virgin blood. Maybe to France. But I've been to Italy. You must, you must have the blood of a virgin, or you will be dead in a few weeks. You and your sister are too well known here in Romania. I go with your blessing. So he's going to Italy and leaving his vampire sister behind. The family will continue. This is Mario. He's in Italy. He's like the uh, groundskeeper at this villa where four daughters live. He bones two of them. I guess this Dracula can be out in the uh, in the sun without burning to a crisp. Is matched by their purity, and the Count's family tradition requires that he marries a virgin. That's why we came to Italy. There's no progress. If they do have the virgin around here we need, they're certainly not for us. You think this family around here would leave their daughter out of their sight for one second? The most important thing has happened to us. So these years. two are the parents of those daughters. They want one of their kids to marry the count. Pins, the body of an uncle. The count who travels with a coffin. Home, and who he wanted to take home to his family vote. So don't be surprised when you'll see it. Yes, she is. Could this be a virgin? We just stopped in for a quick one on our way home from the fields. The sent up the crowd. Anton got some, and has a loaf of bread that he bad. dipped into the blood of a girl who got hit by a young car. Girl. A young kid. I pretended to faint at the sight of her. Fell. Which Dracula quickly sucks up. <sighs> He's the daughters. Young. What will you do? Then I run away with Rubinia. And you can have him. Let's go. Can't really show you much here, but one sister watches her other sister bone the gardener, the groundskeeper. The sisters like to kiss themselves too, which is a little odd. May I introduce Count Fletcher? He's so ugly. Of course he's ugly. You'll have to have babies from him and they'll be ugly too. For the rest of your life you'll be with ugly people. You might as well get used to it. Oh, don't say that. I'm so miserable. You come <sighs> Meanwhile, the Count is suffering without any virgin blood in him. Tonight. The girls are beautiful. They look so pure. Tell me, how do you feel about marrying me? He quizzes how the daughter to me? see if she's a virgin or not. Like that? Yes, sure. Here's a hint, she's not. My family boys do it, little girls. She convinces him that she, she is a virgin. You know. You won't be too embarrassed. You are a virgin? Yes. You're telling me the truth? Yes. I believe you. He soon discovers that he's been duped. And non-virgin blood has a bad effect on him. Count's not having a good day. What does he know? He knows I'm not a virgin. Why did you have to say a thing like that? That's no way for a girl to behave. Have you no sense? Did you have to make an entire confession to him? What about you? Quiz the other girl. You ever went with a man? You had a fiance? She saw that he had no reflection in the mirror. And he's also convinced that she's a virgin. Here's a hint. She's not. And again, he gets sick. The blood of this horse is killing me. I just want my coughing back. 
I wish things had worked out better. This is Perla, though, the 14 year old daughter. Perla has to find out these things so young and within her own family. They act like they're sick. There's something slimy about that count. I don't think he ever wanted to marry any of them. Then he was interested in something. Mario pries open the coffin to see if the Count's relative is in there, his uncle, but no, it's empty, so he begins to suspect he's a vampire. The two middle daughters who sleep around a lot are going to check Perla to see if she's a virgin. She is. To me. You should have known that before. A creep from Romania looking for virgins. That Count who's going to do so much for your family's a vampire. No! Mario feels the only way to save Perla is to take her virginity. And perhaps the grossest scene in the film, Perla's leftovers from her losing her virginity is lapped up by the Count. Do that! You mean you still don't understand? You're sending him up to meet a vampire. What? The Count's a vampire, so forget about a wedding and start thinking about how we're going to kill him. Kill? You betrayed my entire family, and now you turn on your own kind. <laughs> But with her dying breath, she shoots him. Mario grabs an axe and chases the Count through the halls. There goes an arm. There goes another arm. Our now armless vampire runs for Mario. <laughs> now he loses part of the leg. A torso left. Esmeralda, who's now under the Count's spell. No! He's not good to anybody and he never was. He decides to finish him off. Pain is too much for Esmeralda to handle, so she jumps on top of it too. Which pretty much ends our film. Pearl and Mario apparently live happily ever after. All right, let's talk about Blood for Dracula. That was one was Andy Warhol's Dracula. I first got this movie probably back in 1986 or so. I rented it from a video store called uh, City News and Video in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And, um... Had on the same tape, a beta tape, with Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, and I think it was the Hollywood Strangler meets the Skid Row Slasher. I think I read all three of those that night. So what this is, it was, uh, it's a movie where a vampire, Dracula, he's in Transylvania, Romania, wherever the hell that is, and uh, he needs virgin blood, or virgin blood as he calls it, because that, apparently that's the only kind of blood he can survive on. But he's running out of virgins in his community, so he sends his Renfeld-type guy, Anton, out to uh, investigate in Italy. See if they can find a place. There are virgins out there. So Anton comes back and says, this is a great Catholic community. We're going to find a lot of weirds and blood there. So Dracula's like, let's go. Pack our bags. Pack my coffin. And um, so they head to Italy. They stay at this villa uh, where this uh, guy, it's like a castle almost. He's there with his wife and four daughters who are aged 14 to 23. Now, the 23-year-old is apparently homely looking or and she's not worthy. The 14-year-old is too young. But the two middle daughters Perfect virgin blood right there, right? The only problem is they've been boning the gardener, so on a regular basis, the same guy, played by Joe D'Alessandro, I believe. And um, But uh, the Count comes there, and the, the patriarch of the family thinks it'd be great if one of the girls could marry the Count because it could help, you know, stay wealthy the rest of their lives. So the Count um, basically talks to the ladies, and uh, you know, he makes it clear that um, if he's going to marry somebody, it has to be a virgin, a virgin. So uh, the first girl says, oh, yes, I am. And he doesn't believe her. So he's like quizzing her. You've never had somebody touch you, this or that. And, um, you know, uh, and she's like, oh, no, no, no. You'll have to teach me things, blah, blah, blah. Well, eventually says, I believe you. Then he bites her in the neck immediately. And then uh, as soon as he's done, he starts coughing and hacking. And he pukes up all the blood because she was not a virgin. So he does the same routine later with one of the other daughters. 
Um, he gets them both under their spell, but again, he starts puking it up because he can't live on their blood. Um, then he ends up uh, drinking the blood of the older girl, Esmeralda, but ultimately he wants uh, Perla, I think is her name, the youngest daughter. Well, the gardener's got caught on to him by now, and he knows he's a vampire, and he thinks the only honorable thing to do is to uh, uh, take the virginity away from the youngest daughter, who's 14. She's played by a 23-year-old, but 14 in the movie. So he takes her real quick um, before the Dracula can get her, but he busted her hymen and she like bled on the floor. Next thing you know, Dracula's lapping it up like a dog. Um, then the mother of the family uh, uh, comes after Dracula and, or comes after Anton actually. Anton kills her. And then uh, the gardener comes with an ax and basically pursues Dracula. And he ends up chopping him off. Oh, chopping him up limb by limb, chops off an arm, chops off another arm, chops off his leg so he collapses. Ultimately, he puts a stake through Dracula's heart, and then Esmeralda, who's full vamp mode by now, jumps on the stake as well. And uh, that's pretty much how our movie ends. Um, I guess we're kind of led to believe that uh, this gardener's going to take over the estate. I don't know. Dad is still on vacation somewhere. He was off paying bills somewhere doing some business, so... He's still in charge as far as I'm concerned, but whatever. That's how our movie ended. So anyway, I, I did enjoy this movie. I think I may have been a little bit disappointed when I saw this film, you know, 35 years ago. Um, but it's grown on me well. It's, it's almost a little tongue-in-cheek. Our vampire doesn't even seem all that threatening, to be honest with you. He's very calm, laid back, and even keeled. Um, some decent gore sequences in it. Mostly it's just the puking stuff, though. A lot of nudity thrown in as well. Some full frontal stuff there. Just, um, just a fun little film. It ticks all the boxes for an exploitation film, so you can't go wrong with that. Now, I have this uh, Blu-ray here, which I think came from Australia. Our shocks and I don't know who put this out. Cinema Cult? I don't know. I thought it was going to be a... Uh, a uh, PAL Blu-ray, but it's not. It's a region-free thing, so it's a nice Blu-ray. Now, I do know that I think Blood for Dracula and um, Flesh for Frankenstein did get some very nice Blu-ray releases uh, stateside here, um, but if you don't want to spend money for those, this is a pretty good one. I think I got this for the $20 range. So anyway, that's it. It's Blood for Dracula, Andy Warhol's Dracula. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. Let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments. Watch it. Bye.